Okay, everyone, we're going to start our regular school board meeting for Tuesday, February 15th, 2010. Um, uh, Member Grover, would you call the roll, please? Yes, Member Cameron. Here. Member Glass. Present. I am here. Member Johnston. Member Casper. Here. Member Saliga Punko. Here. Member Wasson. Here. Superintendent Dixon. Here. Deputy Clerk Hansen. Here. Secretary Melinda Thibault, Here. Student Reps Lindsay Redenbaugh and Marcus, or excuse me, Lindsay Redenbaugh. Here. And Marcus John. Here. Madam Chair, all but uh, Member Johnston are here. Okay, will everyone rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, everyone, we're going to move right into um, the approval of the agenda. Could I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? So moved. Second. Okay, that's been moved by Member Cameron, seconded by uh, Member Wasson. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, say... Excuse me. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see your light. I just put it on very quickly. Uh, we, had, we had a number of items that we submitted to the uh, agenda setting meeting session for consideration at this meeting and I believe the number was 14 items and so I'm curious as to whether you consider each and every one of those and uh, we're prepared to at least go down our list of requests and and ask that they be reconsidered for this meeting, uh, particularly the ones that uh, that we're wanting to have advance notice of, and that is uh, item number three on the listing, and that is the hearing for closing schools per Minnesota statute 123B.51. Uh, that would be a an item that we asked last time, and there was no time for on the agenda, at least it wasn't added to the agenda but we would want to have it reconsidered for this meeting for a full discussion and or at least to set the time for the schedule for when there will be a schedule of hearings for closing schoolhouses. So that remains a, uh, an item that, that uh, myself and Member Johnston had, uh, had submitted in advance. So I would make a motion to add that to tonight's agenda since it didn't appear uh, on the agenda that I see before us. Second. Having a, dis a motion to have a discussion require on the required hearings for closing schoolhouses per Minnesota statute 123B.51. Okay, do you have that written down then? Maybe you want to get that to... Um Melinda to make sure it's right. Um, I, I do believe that we have already had discussion on that item. Um, so we have a, a motion by Member Glass, seconded by Member Johnston. Is there any more discussion? I think we have. Oh, yes. Um, Member Johnston. Yes, again, uh, why this is so important is, let me read the statute as it says verbatim. The board may close a schoolhouse only after public hearing on the question, parties requesting to give testimony for and against the proposal shall be heard by the board before it makes a final decision. Um, Member Johnson, to close hold on or just not a to second. Close the hold on. Um, I need to note that you are present now. Yes, I am thank here. You. Thank I, but, you. Okay. Um, so, um, Melinda, if you could do that, thank you. Okay, continue. Now, are you saying anything different than what you said the last month? Uh, no, but okay. I don't understand why okay. this board is not addressing this issue. This is I, Minnesota statute. Okay, Member Johnson, I think we're going to be addressing this in the next month or so. I would like to move on. Member Cameron? Johnson. I just want to reiterate, um, um, Chair Saligo Punkel, that we had um, an attorney from Minneapolis come up and address this board, and we are not in violation of any Minnesota statute. Uh, we're doing things correctly, and I just wanted to reiterate that. Thank you, Member Cameron. I appreciate those comments. Okay, Member Johnson, you have something yes, else to Yes, I also add? talked to the Minnesota School Board Association people, and they said most definitely we are violating. And uh, so apparently we have different opinions, which is why 
this board should be addressing this and not blindly going and saying that it's okay. The, the law says what it says, and uh, so we should address it. That's why we have requested this item repeatedly, and we'll do it repeatedly until this board addresses it or until there's a lawsuit that comes against the school. Okay, thank you. Let's vote on Member Glass's motion to have a discussion on school closings, seconded by um, Member Johnston. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Yes. aye. All those opposed say no. 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 Okay, it fails five, two five, right? Okay, we're gonna go on um, to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay, that carries five to two. Okay, we're gonna move right into um, meeting our two student representatives. I'm very pleased that they are both joining us, Marcus John and Lindsay Renba. So Marcus, if you'd like to tell us just a, a minute or two of yourself, um, we are really pleased to have you here today. Um, hi, my name is Marcus John. I'm a junior at East High School. Um, I like to stay as involved as possible um, at East High School and in the community. Um, I realize that you know, this year with the changing schools as well as the, you know, financial problems of the nation that it's, you know, an important time to really get involved and, and step up and that's why I felt like it was important for me to um, run for the student representative uh, spot on this board and I'm really happy to have this opportunity and I'm really looking forward to growing and learning from it, so thank you. Thank you so much. Lindsay, go ahead. I'm Lindsay Rodenbaugh. I'm a junior at Central and I went to Denfeld last year. Um, I like to be really involved too. I'm also in student council, link crew, I'm a junior class officer, I'm in key club, and uh, also I really um, wanted to, you know, learn about what this is all about, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, we are really pleased to have both of you here, and I know, Marcus, you're involved in a lot of things too. Both of you are well, um, really great student representatives. Well done. Thank you so much. Okay, um, I just, I'm going to read something really quick before we get into the um, reading of the minutes. Just a few things that I mentioned last month. Um, I just want to remind everyone that all discussions should go through the chair, and please be recognized by the chair before you speak. Um, please do not have any disparagement or attacks on character. They will not be accepted. And as chair, it is my duty to keep things moving in an orderly and timely manner so that the business of the board can be conducted. Um, and as a board, we want to make sure we show courtesy and fairness to all. We want to ensure that discussion has a purpose. And we also want to not grind people down on technical things. And um, I just want to make sure that we maintain decorum in our board meetings. So I really appreciate you listening to me do that. Okay, we're going to move right on to reading and approving sure. minutes. Oh, Member Johnson? Uh, you'd like to make a correction. I often bring up technicalities. Or I'm bringing them up for a reason because we were supposed to follow rules. So just because your statement that we can't bring up technicalities is uh, incorrect, we have to bring up technicalities because that is what we are as a deliberative board. So I'd like to have that uh, acknowledged okay. by the chair because it has to be acknowledged by the chair. Thank you, Member Johnston. Okay, we're going to move on to the minutes of the regular school board meeting. If I could have a motion, please. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, um, that's motion by Member Cameron and seconded by Member Grover. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the minutes say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay, that measure carries five to two. Okay, thank you. And I think we're going to move right into, let's see, what is the next thing? Is it, uh, reading communications petitions and the report of the superintendent. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I forgot about audience. I skipped right over it. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Still have to get used to this. Okay. Um, okay. Do we have audience participation? Before we move forward, you might want to mention something. I'm not sure why this is in. You might want to mention that it was because we don't have notes oh, for a committee great. of meeting. Oh, you know, I noticed that I had, too. Yeah. Thank you, Member Grover. Um, it does have in the the agenda, the committee of the whole meeting, but we didn't have minutes taken for that. That was just an open discussion. It wasn't a regular voting meeting. So there are no minutes for it. Thank you. Okay, tonight we have one speaker, uh, Mr. Lauren Martell, please. Good evening. 
I want to begin by thanking the new chairperson for acknowledging that those of us who don't agree with the red plan nonetheless are here because we care. The former chairperson never acknowledged that. Again, thanks. I do, however, have some concerns that the chairperson's comments about not grinding down the public with technicalities means she plans on trying to cut off legitimate debate. I hope that isn't the case. I'd next like to refer to an article I read in the News Tribune the day after the last meeting. The last sentence of the article, the district faces at least six million in cuts to its budget for the coming year is already outdated. Just a month later, the shortfall is now over seven million. Reality always asserts itself eventually. The majority and the superintendent keep spinning that everything is rosy financially, but I believe the superintendent's replacement is going to inherit a financial meltdown. The undesignated reserve fund was over $30 million when the superintendent came to town. The last audit, already six months old, showed it to be down to $14 million. He's been robbing over $3 million a year from our savings in an attempt to balance the books, and there's still $7 million in the red. But there was another line in the article that also caught my attention. I've been hearing a lot of this spin over the past year. This claim on their part that they knew all along the student enrollment drop was going to occur. That those who were, quote, educated in the red plan had this all figured out from the beginning. Really? Then perhaps they can explain why they've been caught so flat-footed by the enrollment declines and why they didn't budget for it in their plan if they knew it was going to happen. And I don't remember them sharing the fact that we were going to be running a half billion dollar gamble a long shot risk I wouldn't have wagered $50 on. Everyone knows that once a child is settled into a school, parents are very reluctant to move him or her out again. If they did know this was gonna happen, I think it was irresponsible to take such a high stakes gamble without informing the public. If they didn't know this was gonna happen and are just trying to spin their way out of another jam, then I believe it was incompetent to simply rubber stamp everything and allow this corporation to lead us down this path. Either way, I predict this is gonna be a very hot issue in the upcoming election. In fact, I can guarantee it. Okay, thank you. And we're gonna move right on to reading communications petitions and the report of the superintendent. Thank you. Uh, members of the board and community, uh, under written communications, there's one noted, which was uh, a thank you, uh, really, to Shonda, from Shonda Peller, really acknowledging the, the, her tenure and the celebration we had, acknowledging staff in the district uh, receiving tenure. So that's in the file. Uh, some other recent congratulations, uh, are, I think, are in order. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to uh, recognize Deb uh, Sauter, principal at Laura MacArthur Elementary School. Deb is one of the three finalists for Minnesota National T Distinguished Principal of the Year. And uh, this marks the 28th year of the U.S. Department of Education National Association of Elementary School Principals that have presented this prestigious award. And certainly I uh, wish uh, Deb well and as, uh, as uh, that consideration continues. Uh, also, uh, in service learning, our specialist Kathy Bartzius uh, was selected to receive the 2011 State Farm Service Learning Practitioner Award from the National Youth Leadership Council, and she'll receive that award uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, in April. And uh, as you know, uh, Kathy does a great job with service learning. A couple of student pieces, too. Uh, Chi Wong Choi on violin and Henry French and bass uh, from Woodland Middle School were selected through auditions to, to, process, uh, to be a part of and participate in the Minnesota Middle Level Honors Orchestra concert at the Minneapolis Convention Center. And, and uh, again, I think uh, the goal of that process is to produce the best possible ensemble uh, representing the total state and I, I, we're pleased to have two students to be a part of that. And I think finally, uh, some eighth grade students from Morgan Park Middle School are volunteering at Stowe Elementary right now to help with reading activities. And they've created a, a reader's theater and other word games to help students learn about reading. And I think they're serving again in service learning real role models uh, and encouraging and fostering reading in younger students. And 
you know, there's a lot of that across the district, but I think the idea of, there's, you know, young students always look up to older students and, you know, elementary look up to middle and middle look up to high school and elementary look up to high school. And, and I can tell you, I think that's a great thing to have. So uh, I really appreciate uh, uh, the work of the staff and the students across the district. So thank you. That's great. Thank you so much, Superintendent Dixon. I know there's a lot of great things happening in our school between our students and mentoring. So, okay, we're going to move on to our standing committees, and I'm going to start right out with the Education Committee. And Member Wasson, if you would do the, the Education Committee, please. Okay. This is our Education Committee report for Tuesday, February 15th, 2011. Item 1A was the we had a presentation from community education and adult basic education. Item B was enrollment presentation. We have some inform we, informational items. There were no grant applications. Item 3A, there was nothing. Item 3B is a resolution, as was C. I'll take those at the end of the report. Item D, we have several extended trip requests. Item E, the corrections to the 2011-12 school year. Please note those in your board packets. And we have four diplomas. Congratulations and our best wishes to Anthony Larson, Thomas Nelson, Ronnie Powell, and Anthony Payson. I'd like, shall, I'll go ahead and move this part of the Education Committee report. Second. Okay. Sorry, I forgot to turn on my microphone. Okay, let's um, go right ahead and vote on... Items to be withheld. Are there any items to be withheld? That's right. Remind me. Nothing? Okay, is there anything at all? Let's vote on the whole report ex excluding the two resolutions. So, all those in favor of the Education Committee report, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries 7-0. And then... Um, Member Watson, if you would. Our proceed. first resolution is on page 27, the Fred W. Haas Family Scholarship. Whereas the provisions of the Fred W. Haas Family Scholarship were set up as follows, the scholarship shall be selected as follows: Any student have a passing grade and a diploma from two schools, Central High School Duluth, Minnesota, and Central High School Bemidji, Minnesota, and wishing a university education is eligible. The students wishing to participate shall place their names in a container and one name drawn each year of the above mentioned schools the school boards are to supervise each drawing and whereas Duluth Central High School is set to close after the 2010-11 school year now therefore be it resolved that the school board hereby sp specifically authorize that upon the closing of Central High School that portion of the Fred W. Haas scholarship award will be divided equally between East and Denfold High Schools thus allowing each high school to award a yearly scholarship be it further resolved that the Duluth Schools wishes to extend its sincerest appreciation for the Fred W. Haas Family Scholarship. I move Resolution E-211-2859, February 15, 2011. Second. Okay. Thank you, Member Watson. It's been moved and seconded by Member Cameron. Is there any discussion? A resolution? Okay. Let's go ahead and vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries seven. Oh, unanimously. Okay. The second resolution is on page 28, the acceptance of grants award. Uh, whereas Minnesota statute 465.03 requires a school district to accept grants by resolution expressed in the terms prescribed by the donor in full, etc. And we have one, Minnesota State Colleges and Universities. Its author was Jim Arndt in the amount of $26,903.37. I move Resolution E211-2856, February 15, 2011. Okay, second. Okay, that's been moved by Member Wasson, seconded by Member Cameron. Is there any discussion? Okay, let's vote on the resolution then. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries unanimously also. Okay, I think that does it for the Education Committee report. And we're going to move on. Member Cameron, would you present the Human Resources report, please? Well, this is the Human Resources Committee report um, for Tuesday, February 15, 2011. Um, section 1 is staffing reports, uh, which is... Um, 
action items. Under certified appointments, there are two. Certified co-curricular, there are 20. There are five certified leaves, three certified long-term subs, one certified permanent increase, one certified uh, recall from layoff, one certified resignation, one certified retirement, two uh, certified terminate decreases, three certified temporary increases. Under non-certified, there are five non-certified appointments, one non-certified extension, 10 non-certified leaves, um, two non-certified long-term subs, four non-certified resignations, one non-certified retirement, one non-certified suspension, one non-certified term, and there are 19 non-certified temporary increases. Uh, there are no um, informational items at this time, and there are no future informational items, and there are no uh, HR future items at this time, so I'd like to move the action items at this point. Second. Okay. Thank you, Member Cameron. Um, that is moved by Member Cameron, seconded by Member Watson. Are there any items to be withheld at all? Okay, we're going to go ahead and vote and just know that this is all action items. Thank you, Member Cameron, for reminding us on that. Um, okay, let's go ahead and vote. All those in favor of the Human Resources Committee, vote. say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that carries unanimously. All right, I guess we're going to move right into the Business Committee. So, uh, Member Grover, if you could present that, please. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the first item, item one, is the recurring monthly financial reports. Financial report, approval of payment of claims, budget revisions, wire transfers, investment transactions, average daily men weighted average daily membership projections, fundraisers, and investments in school children. Uh, item 2A, two 2A two is bids. We have one at the East High School bid package number five, totaling approximately, uh, well, just over a million dollars. The next uh, item, next subject with anything into this policies and regulations. First, a change, uh, first reading of by changes to bylaw 9000 regarding the annual meeting. This is a housekeeping item uh, uh, clarifying uh, or saying, I guess, changing who, who, is, uh, who chairs the uh, organizational meeting until the new chair is elected. And the second item is a by change to bylaw 9045 in the negotiating committee. And this brings the uh, uh, bylaw into sync with our current practice, which is to have the entire board serve as the negotiating committee. It's been the practice for quite a few years now. There are no regulations uh, or no contracts. Moving on to section four contracts, change orders and leases. Uh, there are a number of change orders at East High School, the Eastern Middle School, Piedmont Elementary, Denfield High School, Laura MacArthur Elementary School. There are no leases. Uh, there's one resolution regarding the intent to move forward with an operating levy referendum. I, and we'll come back to that. Item six is informational. Uh, the recurring reports to do with the status of, uh, of the facilities management capital projects and Johnson Controls Long Range Facilities Plan Status Report. Change orders not requiring board approval, expenditure and revenue contracts, and lastly, uh, FY12 budget considerations and investments. Uh, informationally on here, considered the first reading. I, I think the intent is to finalize these considerations and investments next month. Um, Madam Chair, should I, do you want to do the resolution first, or the same same order as uh, we did education, about, which which we, is the whole report first? Let's do the resolution okay, first. Okay, resolution first. All right. Only one. Uh, the resolution re regarding the intent to uh, indicating intent to move forward with the uh, operating levy, re levy referendum this fall is on page 74. Whereas the average operating levy for Minnesota school districts is currently $936 per pupil unit, and whereas the current operating levy for our district is $365.60 per pupil unit, and whereas there is no reasonable expectation for additional funding through state aid, which has created a greater need for local support, and whereas additional funds are needed to create and maintain quality programs, therefore be it resolved that the school board hereby intends to take future action to place an operating levy referendum on the November 2011 ballot. I move resolution B211 
57, February 15, 2011. Second. Okay, that's been moved by Member Grover, seconded by Member Wasson. Is there any discussion? Um, Member Johnston? Uh, yes, I've got a point of information. Uh, the $936 number appears to be incorrect. I could uh, like to have a discussion on that. Why it appears incorrect to me, according to the latest Minnesota Department of Education uh, referendum news after the 2010 referendums, that average in the state of Minnesota is only $732. Also, I have a PowerPoint that the district presented two years ago on the last operating levy that went up, and that indicates that the average is $760. So that was two years ago, so there seems to be some discrepancy here. So could somebody explain uh, that discrepancy? The uh, $936 figure, uh, Member Johnston and members of the board, the $936 figure came from the uh, levy worksheets published by uh, MDE, and I believe our latest version of that, uh, which you approved the levy in December, the latest uh, version of the worksheets was published in November, I believe, uh, for us of this past year, November 2010, and that's where I took it off that document. I would suggest rechecking that because uh, uh, why was your numbers two years ago $700? Well, I would... Uh, Anything that's uh, two years old in terms of a state average wouldn't have updated figures in terms of other districts that have passed operating levies, you know, within that two-year period, uh, if I'm understanding your point properly. And, and I would say that the November uh, 2010 data from MDE would be the most current data that I would have available. Another question to Mr. Hansen, this $365 number, which is a levy that was passed in 2008, I believe. Uh, according to MDE, we actually have an operating levy of about $404. Could you explain, is, there, is that a carryover from 2001? Uh, or Jody, I know you're shaking your head there too. Could somebody explain that to the public here, that discrepancy? There's a uh, uh, transitional item that the state approved uh, directly uh, for approximately $39 uh, per pupil unit, and that um, uh, is set to expire in another uh, two, three. One, one, two years, I think it is. Um, and uh, it just wasn't listed on here because it, you know, wasn't the amount that the people uh, that the vote was taken on in 2008, as you indicated. I'd like to make a motion to table this uh, item. Because of the discrepancies here, I don't think we should be passing items. And I would certainly be glad to show the data that I have directly from MBE to Mr. Hansen. Until that is verified, I think that we should be uh, tabling this item. Okay, Member Johnson, we have a motion on the floor already, um, this resolution. I, I've made a motion to table, or I amended, I make a motion to table this uh, motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So we have a motion to table this, and we take a vote on this, on to tabling the motion, correct? Well, there's discussion first. You should ask for if there's any discussion. Okay. Is there any discussion? Member Glass. Uh, I, too, looked at the spreadsheets that were available from MDE and found their number to be at 732 for the fiscal year 2010 uh, and the 404 listing is a number for Duluth for that same operating year and so from the, that perspective these numbers are somewhat in question and I had some additional uh, questions concerning this that I will ask after the tabling thing is passed if I may because they're not really relevant to the tabling motion. Okay. Member Glass, are you, are you finished, Member I'm Glass? Finished. Okay, could you turn your light off, please? Thank you. Member Watson. You know, I guess I'm um, rather confused by board members' actions in that um, with or without the change to the 404 approximately dollars, we are still, um, as a school district, um, in the lower half. Um, 
of levy information and, and I would hope that all board members are understanding the great need that we must pass a levy this coming November um, despite if indeed there is a difference which I don't see there being a difference in these numbers um, as what we have been given by our professional business people. Um, they are current as of November and um, I am fine with that. So that would be my opinion. Um, a levy is definitely in need for this coming November. All of us as board members need to get behind this. We saw in the last levy where a uh, board member was um, <coughs> spoke out against the levy and I think that did us harm. So I would hope that each and every one of us can get on board and think positive and try to help our district in these very difficult financial times. And I do appreciate the business um, service department putting this together. Thank you, Member Wasson. Member Casper? Um, first of all, if we're all going to get on board, we need to all talk the same language and we all need to have the same understanding so if we have a in my mind if we have a couple of board members who are asking for clarification and their support potentially hinges on it I think we're prudent to provide that information rather than to call them out or uh, point something out that happened in the past. Uh, if we're all going to get on board, we all need to be on board and we all need to have a clear understanding <clears throat> of where we're at and where we need to be. Um, and, and we need to work together to accomplish this. It's not us who's going to pass a referendum in November. It's the public of ISD 709 who's going to pass a referendum in November for us. So we need to be unified in that message and if there's misunderstandings that can be cleared up easily it sounds like to provide that information to board members who are concerned about where we are at um, I think that that is a good thing for us to do to, to clarify some of those things so so they would feel better about supporting it and getting behind it, um, as has been mentioned. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Member Casper. Member Grover, please. Um, Madam Chair, I wonder if you would indulge me and allow me to ask either Member Glass or Johnston exactly what information, where, right. where this, what the 732 figure represents. Okay. Yes, this is from the spreadsheet from MDE CUI 2010 Operating Revy, Levy, parentheses 1.xls, and I'd be glad to show that to you. But, but operating afterwards. spreadsheet of what? Operating levies passed in uh, the summation, summation of the 2010 operating levies okay. along with oh. the other totals of everything that has uh, accumulated up to then, okay. including the 2010 levies, including the ones that didn't pass. It, there's a lot of information there. Okay, I'm, I guess my concern is that we're possibly not being apples to apples here. I believe Mr. Hansen said that um, he had that the figure he gave us and that it appears in the resolution is the figure of approved levies in place not necessarily passed in 2010. Is that correct, uh, Bill? Uh, that's correct, yes. Levies in place okay. as published by MDE on the uh, levy worksheet documents published to all the districts okay. in the state. Thank you. I guess, I guess the remainder of my remarks I'll make brief because uh, I, I would just echo what Member Wasson said. It, that the, um, the, the precise figure, let, let's assume for the moment that $730 is correct. That still puts us, would put us at 50% of the state average. So that, that's the point. The point is that we are way below the state average, not exactly what that state average might be. So uh, I, I personally don't, don't uh, intend to support tabling this. I don't see the need to do that. Thank you, Member Grover. I, Member I just want to reiterate, um, thank you, Member Grover. Um, the question was asked and answered, I believe, and uh, we do all need to get on board because we do need to support this because we need it. Okay, Member Glass, you have one more thing to say? Uh, I want to answer 
member Grover's question exactly that and the $732 was the average of 337 school districts that, that's the number in the spreadsheet and so that, that's the total value for those 337 school districts uh, what I wanted to ask as my question not relevant to the motion to table was the district's operating levy at the present time brings in approximately what dollar amount per year approximately uh, 4.8 million or 4.5 million something like that and that 4.5 or 4.8 million comes to the district for those purposes but it also pays to other districts <coughs> that take our students mm -hmm. is that correct the m monies follow uh, resident pupils of this district okay and at, at this time that we passed this this levy was in 08 we had set a, set a levy to pay for the facilities plan that was about 10 or 11 million as I recall is that correct can I ask you to repeat your question I'm sorry member glass uh, the amount in 2008 that was levied for the red plan was about 10 or 11 million is that correct I'm sorry you're testing my memory and it's I'm not recollecting accurately enough I'm I apologize so I can't say you one way or the other well it's my recollection that the the levy against the taxpayers in this community was about 12 million dollars and that 12 million jumped to about 22 million in 08 and has continued at that 20 to 22 million dollar figure for the last several years in in other words the the amount of money levied to pay for the plan red plan is about two and a half times the amount of this operating levy that was passed in 08 so the taxpayers are paying member glass we're, you're getting off the subject here the, well the i'm trying to put it in, the, in comparison yeah this is a, this is an operating levy we're talking about yes and it's coming out of the same pockets that that our our red plan levy is coming but out of and i wanted to make a comparison that the people in the district are paying paying the full amount both for the buildings and for the operations and now we'll be asking them to pay more for the operations that that's the essence that that we're coming to we're and you said additional funds are needed to create and maintain quality programs well in addition to that facet additional emphasis is needed for the public to trust us with more of their money that's what the vote is going to come up with they're going to we're going to be asking them for more than the, the four hundred dollars per pupil which is equivalent to 4.8 million we're going to be asking them for at least another 4.8 million per year probably if we're going to double that figure and so they'll be not only paying the 10 million per year for the building plan they'll be paying 10 million a year for the operating topic so that'll be approximately 20 million per year that of which we'll be asking them to be paying of which they will have been asked to pay half of that and we'll and this board has assessed the other half so I'm, I'm just putting think, in perspective okay I just we're, yeah we're looking at tabling this sure. I'm gonna move on to member Casper your turn thank you um, mr. Hansen uh, could you tell me and I'd hope to ask this at our previous meeting and didn't have a chance to could you tell me with the current operating referendum how much that costs the average taxpayer or av average household um, in Duluth a year or a month I 
I apologize, Member Casper. I don't have that uh, in front of me tonight, and I don't have it uh, uh, in my memory either. And I apologize for asking that without giving you notice. I had intended on doing that at our committee meeting. So I'll be more than happy to circulate it to the board uh, tomorrow. Okay. Um, regardless of that, uh, I think we as board members all got on, uh, got elected, and ran for for seven different reasons probably um, but I think all of us got involved because we're concerned about education and we're concerned about the kids of this community no matter what perspective we come from we're still ultimately concerned about the kids of this community's education and we're concerned about the future of this community because our, our kids being education educated are is this community's future so recognizing that we're in a difficult position next month we're going to be cutting uh, somewhere between five and seven million dollars from the budget which is what I'm going to be <laughs> working towards um, but recognizing we're going to have to make significant cuts and those cuts are going to impact our kids' education today my kids uh, other people in this community's kids, um, all of our board as board members' kids, and and wanting to do what's best for them, even if we have differences of opinion, and some of these numbers are a little different, but nonetheless, recognizing that we are significantly below the state average, and recognizing that the state isn't going to be able financially able to help us or help any district for that matter, the responsibility of educating our kids becomes more and more on us as taxpayers of IST 709. And I think regardless of our differences and concerns over these numbers, we still have to recognize that there's a, there is a significant difference between the state average and what Duluth is asking of its taxpayers. And if, if Member Glass's uh, comments are are right in that uh, ten million dollars a year goes towards the long-range facility plan and it's about ten dollars a month uh, for the average household or average hundred thousand dollar household 933 I believe or whatever that number is if we look at that if we equal that in an operating referendum we're looking at about a about ten dollars a month um, give or take, and my math, I didn't do well in math, so I'm sure I can be corrected on that. Um, but recognizing that even if it is at $10 a month, to me as a taxpayer in our community, that isn't too much to ask to support the education of our kids. Now, I have questions and concerns about some of the activities and, and I'm working through those processes and finding answers and learning more about the district every single day. I'm still going to have questions and I'm still going to have concerns, but recognizing that we as a board, um, we are the people that are going to have to become unified to support this operating referendum because it really starts here. It doesn't end here, but it starts here with our support. So I'm going to ask us as a board to get behind an operating referendum to understand it, to get more information about what it potentially can do for our students, what it can do for the education of our community. Put aside our differences, put aside what tears us apart and look for something that can bring us together. So I'm going to support this operating referendum because I feel it's that important to our kids' future. Thank you. Um, we'll, we'll pull all that information, but, I, but I'm thinking back too that I think that roughly 10 or million or whatever, whatever you're saying makes sense at $10 per month on that original amount. If that generates 10 million a year over 20 years, that's 20 million. You think about interest, that's probably pretty close. I remember seeing in this room, Mr. Glass, you were on the board and we talked about that and that there, the, uh, I do re also, your math is about right. If you think that a local levy for learning on the same tax base generates about 4.8 million, 
and the reality is I would bet that's in the four to five dollar range on a local on a on a local house. We have all that. I will also tell you we also have information that says, and I heard Mr. Glass say the sum of that uh, presently with the three hundred and sixty five dollar levy and I think we explained the thirty nine dollars plus what the longer facility plan on that ten dollars is against net tax capacity is still gonna I haven't seen your numbers, but it's going to put us still in the bottom half of outstate districts uh, in terms of what that net tax capacity looks like. I don't know if it would help the board listening to what you said, because I do believe this is something you do need to get behind and uh, come together as a board um, when you look at the levels of cuts we've made the last number of years. Would it help to simply take out the 936 and simply change the first one? Would there be unanimous support if the first one simply said, whereas our school district certainly is below the state average? All right. Uh, it, uh, and and leave the, I mean, if you want, we can, t I think we explained the 404. That's simply the the reason you didn't put in 404 was the $39 is is a phase-out plan not associated with, with uh, uh, a levy that people would vote on. Uh, if that would help, I would offer maybe that as a way. We seem to be hung up over that 936. We can certainly get you the information, look up the, the information that was referenced by Mr. Johnson, but we can show you the table from the Department of Ed that shows all the districts too. But if that would help you get off of that number and get unanimous support for that, it might be something you want to consider. Okay, um, Member Johnson, you had something else? Yeah, so just to remind the chair that there is motion on the floor of the table, and that's what we're talking about here. And again, we have numbers that are being questioned. I think as a couple of the members have alluded to that uh, uh, some members do have questions, me being one of them, about the accuracy of the numbers that this board has uh, been using a lot in the past. This seems to be another one of those things. And again, I'm asking this, uh, this uh, board to table this. That's what we should be voting on, and that's what we are going to be voting on soon. Okay, Member Cameron. <clears throat> I'm not in support of table, end, but I do want to just um, reference what Dr. Dixon just said, and perhaps it would be useful to put in that we're below the state average, but I want to go back to the history of education in this country, and uh, perhaps you might want to put a clause in there that public education was was founded on citizens paying for it, not the state and not the federal government. And when you talk about there is no reasonable expectation uh, for additional funding through the state, perhaps the state is sending us a message. And I think that we need to be cognizant of that. Um, no reasonable expectation today, perhaps no reasonable expectation anytime soon. Okay, we're going to vote on tabling this resolution. Um, all those in favor of tabling the resolution say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Okay, that, let's see, how do I want to say this? Two to five. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to vote on the original resolution or do we want to have an amendment? I'll make an amendment to that. Okay, Member Wasson. Um, I would make an amendment omitting the 936 per pupil unit. I'll second that. I'll second. Okay, so we're going to change this. It doesn't work. Um, you might want to say it's currently below. Yes, currently yeah, below. It be it's currently average. Below state average. Okay, that's been moved by Member Wass and seconded by Member Cameron. Okay, so whereas the average operating levy for Minnesota school districts. I think you have to say for Duluth is below the current state average, don't you? Yeah. Uh, I, th I think yeah, that, yeah. that would need yes. to say whereas right. the average operating levy for, or the operating levy for Duluth, Duluth. is presently oh, yes. below the state average. That's fine. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Let's make sure we have that right. I think we can, I think. Presently below state average. Now let's make sure we have this right. I, I, Where, I'll go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah. Whereas the state average operating levy for Duluth is 
no, that would be too much. Yeah. I just say, I would suggest, Board, it just say, whereas the Duluth, op the, the, the Duluth operating levy is below the state average for Minnesota school districts or something. Yep. That's right. Okay, thank you, Superintendent. So, whereas the Duluth operating levy for Minnesota school, or, the, operating sorry, levy is below operation. the state average it's for Minnesota schools. Average. Why don't you just add Duluth? And I'm sorry, I haven't been recognized, but <laughs> I'm sorry, whereas Cameron, the go ahead. current operating levy for Duluth, okay, is below, is below. Is below, the, the, state is below the state average for Minnesota, or you get something like that, because that way you're not changing too much of yep. it. Perfect. Okay. okay. We got it. Okay, thank you. So we have that moved by Member Wass and seconded sure. by Member Cameron. And we, let's see, Member Johnston, I can't see you over there. Um, yes. Uh, I would have to oppose uh, that amendment. Uh, again, we're talking about money here. There's no reason at all why numbers that presented by the school district should not be accurate. And to say that it's half that, half what does that mean? Uh, uh, we have to look at the whole picture here. Uh, for example, uh, the data that I handed out before, the total taxes that this, this district pays, that the citizens pay to the district, we are in the top 80% of that. And uh, so to have the parsing the numbers here that this is going to be uh, insignificant, uh, the taxes that this district pays, the citizens in this district pays is not insignificant and it's not below half. Uh, there was a comment made that uh, school education is not paid for by the state or the federal government. I'd like to remind the board that uh, 70, I believe 75 percent of our funding comes from the state, which is from uh, in income tax and prop or sales tax and making statements that somehow we as a district are not paying it and then making it sound like we're only paying less than half is just plain wrong. Okay, thank you, Member Johnson. Member Watson? I, I would just encourage all board members to read the first line. It's just, this resolution is just indicating the intent to move forward with an operating levy. All of the numbers and figures will be presented when we decide what language would be in the levy, how much we're going for. This is just the intent to move forward with a levy. And at that point, I know we'll all be unified. Thank you, Member Wasson. Okay, we're going to vote on the amendment. Member Grover, would you read that just to make sure we know that, that one change, and then we'll vote on the amendment. Okay, yeah, and before I do, I want to point out that the, the word half was not in the amendment, at least not as I wrote it down. Uh, this is what I have recorded, and and Melinda can tell me if this is in sync with, she, with what she has. Whereas the current operating levy for Duluth is below the state average and... Okay, thank you. Member Grover, we are going to vote on that amendment. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, that carries 5-2. Now we're going to go and vote on the whole resolution. Um, all sure. those. Oh. I, um, Member Glass? I did have another item I told uh, mentioned before that, that I would speak to the, the language because I do believe that, that we have been remiss in, in, in fact, recognizing that, that uh, the at-large uh, school board members uh, who were voted in the last couple of elections got 60% of the vote and their platforms were for major change, significant change. Uh, I think we ought to have a section under the last whereas that says it is necessary to rebuild public trust in this district and we need to become more transparent and we need to open our agenda setting meetings to board members and we need to release the documents that board members have been asking for and not been able to see. Member Glass, that doesn't have anything to do with this resolution at Public all. Public trust? That doesn't have anything to do with that. Okay, Member Johnson, you wanted to say something? I made something? a motion. I second it. There was a motion? That was my motion. To, to add another whereas, and to the last whereas. Whereas, this is necessary to rebuild public trust. Do you have that written for down for... I'm telling you what it says. Okay. okay. That's fine. 
Okay, the, all those, is there any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor of that amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Okay, it fails, three, four. Okay, we're gonna move on to vote on this resolution. And the I have to say, board order. members, um, this is a very point good of example of we're, point of we're order, kind of Madam Chair. Things on our resolution. So, what I, I think. Uh, what point we need of to order. Do is excuse me. A point of order. Uh, member, member Johnson, you haven't been called upon. Yes, please. that's correct. The point um, of orders do not have to be recognized by the chair. A uh, point of order means uh, that uh, you have to respond to me. Point of order. I have you to are not. Do, to you are running. Yes. Okay. What What would you like to you say? You asked me Johnson? what my point of order is. Uh, okay, you're not going to ask me, so I'll tell you. Point of order is there has to be discussion before a vote goes on. The chairperson is supposed to ask if there's any more discussion, and only after that there is no more discussion, then there is a vote. I, I did ask if there was discussion. It was silent. So just wanted I know to you make... didn't. You just asked said for a vote, Remember and Johnson? I had point of order that what, I wanted to have like more to discussion. Add? What would you like to add to the discussion? Oh, okay, thank you. We are in discussion on this item then. Which, which item are we talking about now? The, the, the original resolution. The original resolution. Exactly. As amended. That's what we're on right now. Because we already uh, no, voted down the amendment. Right, exactly. Okay. So right. we are on the original resolution. That is correct. Okay. With the amendment. That is. So um, what would you like to add to that? I'd like to add to it. I'm, having, I'm asking that there be debate. There has to be debate when there's motions. To remind the chairperson when there's motions, there is debate on that before there is a vote. The chairperson is supposed to ask if there's any more debate. Are you saying okay. now that we're having debate now? Or are you going Member to? Member Johnson, uh, I, did you want to discuss this some more? Uh, go ahead. That's what I'm I said. I'm calling upon yes. you, but we've already discussed this a long time, so go ahead. Uh, discussing a long time does not mean that we shouldn't have more discussion. Since there's discussion, there's been several motions, so I would suggest following uh, our rules of order. Uh, yes, uh, on this, I think there's a lot of discussion here about this board, about were they going to be working together? Was this board going to be unified to pass a thing? It was clear that this board has no intention whatsoever to continue working with uh, the other board members. So uh, I guess that's been quite clear by this discussion. There's no change here. I'd like to iterate why I will have to be voting against this. First of all, nobody even asked me about this before this came up. If there was any concern about being together and working together as a board, maybe somebody could have talked to me about it. Uh, that never happened. Uh, so let's look at some of the facts here. Again, uh, the statements were made that uh, we have to pay for education, not the state or the federal government. Again, to reiterate that the state already pays 75% of the school budget, taxes, Operating levies are extremely small part. In fact, I believe it's like uh, three percent make up that. That's not a significant part. The state and the federal government already pay for almost all of our education in this city. Uh, let's look at some of the other things. The other taxes we already pay. I handed this out before in the truth and taxation hearing. We're in the top 80 percent of taxes in non-metro uh, school districts. We're 21 percent higher than average, not lower than average, and uh, so this that is the facts. If you look at other things that we've done here, what is the tax levy uh, on non-referendum uh, levy? We are by far the highest, by far the highest of the non-metro and uh, local school districts. So when people say that we're below average, that's just plain and simply wrong. Uh, let's look at uh, here this summer, we, we passed $5.4 million to take from the general fund to go to the long range facility plan, $5.4 million. This was an if or and it was, that was directly what the referendums, what the uh, resolutions did and we passed those. This board passed those. So by passing this, by, and, and for this to go through and have an operating levy, that's again Another thing which the people in this district are going to see through again, uh, this is nothing more than supporting the red plan which was done without a vote already. We're going to go through now, maybe this board should go through and uh, elect not to have a vote again on this. Wouldn't that be a nice way to get uh, cooperation with the city? 
so anyway, that's why I'll have to be voting against this, and it's disappointing that this board could not start working with the people that were elected instead of uh, uh, ignoring them, keeping off all our agenda items, not listening to the city and people in this city. And uh, if that would happen, maybe we could go forward. And this board at this point has failed in doing that. Member Kramer. Um, Chair Saliga Bunker, I, I, I don't want to get into a heated debate with um, Member Johnson. I do want to say that um, we all know what we receive from the state and federal government. What I was pointing out is that there has been a decrease in a decrease in the amount of funding that we receive, and it's not just ISD 709, it's statewide, it's also with universities. So I'm very much aware of what percentage comes from the state, what percentage comes from the federal government, but that is decreasing, and that's a reality. And uh, when I mentioned the history of public education, it was the citizens who paid for it, not state and not federal. Um, you say that we haven't approached you about being unified. Uh, last week at, uh, I believe it was the business committee meeting, Member Watson spoke adequately about how we as a board need to be unified in communicating the need for this levy. So just clarifications on some of the things that you mentioned, Member Johnston. Okay, thank you, Member Cameron. Okay, we're going to vote on this resolution. Okay, all those in favor of the resolution with the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, that passes 5-2. All right, that's enough for the resolution. We're going to go back to the business report. Member Grover. Yes, Madam Chair, I move the remainder of the business committee report. Second. Okay, that's been moved by Member Grover, seconded by Member Lawson. I do have an item to withhold. And are there items to withhold? Okay, Member Grover. Uh, under bids, the East, East High School bid package number 5. Member Casper? Um, 1F. 1F. And uh, 6D. 6D. Okay. Member Glass? Uh, 1B. I'm sorry. 1B. B as in boy? Boy. 3A1. 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 A two and three A two, you said. Yes, three A one and two. Okay, Member Johnson. Two A one. Three A one. Wait, it's yeah. Wait, no. two two A one. Two A one. Okay, that's already been withheld. And there was another one. Three A one. That's already been withheld, also. Three A two. That also. Uh, four. Which part of four? All of them. The whole four? And five. Actually, it's four. Uh, let's see, what number is it? Looks like it's 4B4. Four 4B4? Four. Four four. Right. And 4B5. B. Like to have a vote on those two and a uh, 6D that's already been and 6E are, are those all for separate votes or just those are information information yeah so, uh, 4B4 4B5 other ones discussion okay we're going to start with um, let's see 1B, Member Glass. Yes, so 1B, the approval of payment of claims. Uh, this is for the month, I believe, of November. December. Is that right? Is it November or December? December. December. And it's another $20 million a month where Johnson Control's share of what we're paying them is $900,000, $900,000. 
the uh, attorneys that we're paying in the month of December come up to close to twenty thousand dollars, and those are the two items I want to uh, to report to you. So that ends my question on one B. Okay, and we're going to go on to one F. Um, Member Casper, you had a question yes. on that. Yes, uh, Mr. Hansen. It's nice to see that our Wadham has leveled out, isn't it? We saw a couple of drops, and it's nice to see. This is the this is, you know, this is my Sunday paper. This is the first page I go to see because this, to me, is critical to our success. So it's nice to see that some of the measures that we've put in place that that our teachers and our staff are doing in communication. We're getting out. We're keeping students in our schools. We're educating them. We're doing the best job we can, and it's nice to see that that number has pretty much unchanged now for the last couple of, at least the last month and almost the last two months. So um, I want to thank you for that and thank our staff and teachers for working as hard as they have to try to keep that number where it's at. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Member Casper. Okay, we're going to move next to 2A1. Mr. Go Member Grover. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I would just like to request a separate vote on that, that bid at, uh, at East High School. Okay. Um, okay, let's go ahead and vote on that right now. See, see if there's other or see if, if there's any other discussion on, on 2A1 to have a separate vote on that. Yes. Okay. Um, Member Johnston. I had some questions on that. Again, uh, Mr. Leiter, explain to me again, these are a change order recommendations, I believe, or these are bid package recommendations from Bassard Corporation addressed to Johnson Controls. And then uh, apparently, uh, where, do, where do we get involved? We're just paying the bottom line here. Why isn't this addressed to us as a school district? Since I think we're paying that 739000 are we not? Member Johnston, uh, members of the board, the, the way that uh, we've processed bids in uh, our school district is consistent with this and that where it involves construction, um, the, the architect um, typically working with the construction manager would well, work with the district to define the bid packages, and then uh, we the district solicits the advertisement of bids based on those designs. When the contractors respond with their bids, they're open publicly, consistent with the public bidding law, and then the architects and construction manager, in this case, um, Bossart and Johns Controls, uh, work with the district, review the bids, follow up with the contractors to make sure contractors are comfortable with their bids and that there is no um, conditions that would put them in a position to request their bid be withdrawn. In some cases, they're clerical errors. That's the type of discussion that takes place, make sure everybody is comfortable and doesn't have a legitimate reason to be withdrawn from, th that their bid would be withdrawn. Then they make a recommendation to the school district through my office and I prepare it for school board action. So tonight the school board is being asked to approve the bids that are listed here with the contractors that are identified that, uh, that represents the lowest responsible bids received for these particular categories of work for that project. So this is where the school board takes action beyond the initial review of plans that uh, were done preliminary to this. So both uh, Boussart as well as Johnson Controls are both construction managers? Bossart is the, is the construction manager on the project, but our contract is with Johnson Controls, and Bossart is a subcontractor of theirs. Okay, and we don't have a contract. I believe I've asked you this before with Bossart. Is that correct? We do not have a contract directly with Bossart. That is why they have submitted their recommendation to Johns Controls, which then recommends, forwards it to the school district. That's the contractual chain of command that's related to this. That sounds like a very expensive chain of command by having several people that are assuming Bossart as well as Johnson Controls. We know Johnson Controls is making money. Is Bossart making money on this also? The, the, uh, the, the recommendation is coming 
through John's controls, signed by um, John's controls, forwards it to us. Now I'm making the recommendation to you. So it is a, a chain of, of uh, appropriate communication that is taking place here. We have a contract with John's controls. They have a subcontract with John's controls is um, forwarding the paper to us that's coming from Bossart. So I, I, I guess I'm not clear on what your question is there. I guess I'm just wondering, it sounds like we're very expensive construction management here. And uh, now I'm also assuming then, I think I've been told, correct me if I'm wrong, that the contract with the Bossard is proprietary information from Johnson Controls that we cannot get. Is that correct? I'd like to know how much all, all these things, this is just one example of many, I'm yeah. just picking this up, this happens to be here this month. Seems like a very, very, very expensive process. Um, Member Johnson, members of the board, I, I, I think uh, in the past I provided um, a, a letter that included examples of the contracts that we have with John's Controls that represents all of the fees that are related to the architectural services, the program management, the construction management, the commissioning. Um, there's a, a number of categories that included for your information a total fee that's related to the design and administration of these projects. And I think in, the, in that letter I've also represented how that relates on average to the type of fees that are paid for architectural construction management, what typically is considered soft cost in these projects. And from the very beginning of uh, the district entering into a contract with John's Controls, I think there's been discussion about the appropriateness of those total fees. So in my, I guess, opinion, that's responding to whether or not the fees overall are appropriate. And the total fees um, were included and identified in that communication. I'd be glad to pre provide it again if it was by chance something, Member Johnson, that wasn't presented to you or it was before your tenure on the board. Uh, no, you did give that to me as well. And yes, there has been a lot of discussion on it and not all of it good. Thank you, Mr. Leiter and Member Johnson. Okay, we're going to vote separately on 2A1, the bid for the Eastern High School bid package number five. No more discussion. All those in favor of the East High School bid package, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, that's 5-2 with Members Glass and Johnston <coughs> voting against it, correct? Okay, we're going to move on. Let's see, the next item that was withheld was, um, let's see, 3A1. 3A1, I'm sorry, I missed that. Okay, Member Glass. Uh, yes, the uh, change in the regulation defining the annual meeting. We're substituting a sentence in place of the word superintendent, and we're not doing any other changes. Is that right? Oh, holy underline this to add. Okay. Yeah, page 43. Page 43, if you 40, see member. 42. Oh, I'm sorry, 42. I skipped it. Yeah, 42. Uh, so that's a change. The question that I, I wanted, well, one of the questions that, that comes up as to who's running the meeting is also who's setting the agenda for that meeting and that if that meeting comes on the uh, the first Tuesday after the f January 1st that would be on the first Tuesday of the month I think that would be the uh, agenda setting meeting that's usually held at noon in the uh, superintendent's office do we are we by default not defining who's setting the agenda for this meeting Okay, Member Glass, that, um, okay. Uh, Member Glass, members of the board, uh, administration puts together the uh, agenda for the organizational meeting. Uh, that's been the practice for as long as I've been here. The administration puts together that? For the, organiza for the organizational meeting, that's correct. Okay, and, and so the item on the agenda that I've asked on a number of occasions as to what is its basis that 
readopts all of the regulations, bylaws, and policies. That's part of the agenda that you set for doing that? And, and is there a basis in law for that item? Not that you need to answer it now, but I've, I've been asking that question for, for three years and not gotten an answer. So when we're going to change the policy, it seems that, that somewhere we ought to uh, uh, define what that agenda items are and where they come from, like we do in, in the other part of our policy for this district. If there was a question there, I missed it. I think it was a statement. Okay, so the answer is the administration still. You set the agenda for that meeting. Yeah, the administration sets the agenda for the organizational meet meeting held uh, as early in January as reasonable, reasonably possible, generally on the first Tuesday of the month. And the items on that agenda are set by the administration. No board members. Yes. I think that's what I said, right? Okay, thank you. May I? I, I well. I just want to say that we've had this discussion as well, and uh, administration is following what the board has said. We've had this is past practice, and if we want to have this discussion again as a board to change it, then we need to do that. But um, they're following our lead, and we've had this discussion before. Thank you, Member Cameron. Okay, um, Superintendent. I, I do think, uh, and we've, we've had continued discussion about this at actually committee meetings. I think, uh, as you said, this agenda, that agenda setting has been fairly standard for yeah. who knows how long. Uh, I think over this last year there's been discussion that says by some board members, as we look to next year, should we change some of those items? Right. We've had discussion about that. Uh, about saying, uh, particularly under the section that you referenced, Mr. Glass, that are, are is it necessary to have all policies reaffirmed by the board? Are there some that, uh, so I, I just think as we think forward to next year, obviously I won't be here for that discussion, but given the discussion that's happened this year at the committee meetings, we, it's not like we've ignored that. We've had those discussions and there's been discussions about that item on that agenda for the future should it be changed. So I think between now and next January, next fall sometime, start thinking about that agenda and whether some of that are we, given the discussion, it, it would probably need to come back differently in a year. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Superintendent Dixon. Okay, we're going to move on. Mr. Glass, you also have 3A2. You had a question on that? Uh, yes. This is a uh, item defining the policy for the negotiating committee. The negotiating committee is a committee that is charged with the boards dealing with the representation of employee groups uh, to hold meetings, to meet and confer with employee groups. And now we're changing it from a committee structure to one that the entire board uh, participates as members of the negotiating committee. And I would like to add a sentence that says that, that as a negotiating committee, we will meet at least semi-annually with these groups So that's a motion? Yes. With what, with what groups? What, with yeah. the employee groups. I mean, we're defining that the fact that we've got a committee, what its purpose is, what its, its members are, and I'm just saying that we need to uh, specify that we will, in fact, do the job and meet at least semi-annually with, with the um, employee groups of this district as a board. So that's a motion. That's a motion to, to add, add that to sentence this. after the first sentence to add that one. That we will, as a as a okay, committee, meet. Do I have a second? Semi annually. It's a second. Okay. So I don't know, Melinda. Did you get that, Member Grover? Did you get that? Not verbatim. To add a sentence that says, "As a negotiating committee, the board will meet at least semi annually with the employee 
Correct. We'll meet at least semi. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Okay, Member Cameron, you want to say? I, I need to know, I need clarification on, on the purpose of meeting with the various employee groups. Um, Member Glass proposing that, that we create a labor management or, or a labor board committee to uh, have discussions prior to negotiations to reach yes or consensus is I don't understand the purpose behind that so I, I'm asking for clarification thank you member Cameron um, member Grover you want to add? Um, clearly to me to me this is clearly an attempt to move the board in a direction which a majority of the board has indicated which it doesn't with direction which it does not wish to move which is hands-on negotiating by the board itself we, I would say, I would submit that we already meet more than twice a year with all of our bargaining units through the uh, process, which I, I think the majority of us are comfortable, which is to delegate the actual hands-on negotiating process to administration. The intent of this isn't to lead the whole board into negotiating across the table. The intent is to bring this uh, bylaw in into sync with the practice which is that the entire board meets behind closed doors regularly as needed which is regularly um, to set parameters and to get feedback and to give feedback on on the negotiations so I I, I certainly would not have uh, support this amendment okay, thank you member Grover superintendent did you want to add to that uh, I do I think uh, uh, First of all, uh, I, I want to remind the board, I think there are 11 bargaining units, 10 or 11, 11, 10, 10, I believe. Okay. There are 10 bargaining units, first of all. Second of all, you have to be careful. The process, as, as you described, Mr. Grover, is you give us negotiating parameters, and that's where it takes place as a, as a board of the whole. That's what you're suggesting here. And then we do the negotiating on your behalf and bring back to you uh, uh, settlement offers and, if we need clarification, through a, a closed process uh, as appropriate. The, the other problem you would have is if you have a board meeting with employee groups semi-annually, if that's negotiating, in essence, you've opened the contract back up. Contracts may be multiple-year contracts, and if you meet with an, with an employee group with the intent of negotiations during the terms of the contract, then it also makes it possible that the employee group unit could say, you have now opened the contract through that conversation, and therefore now all items are back on the table. So, th so you have to really be careful about th this particular piece. Um, in fact, once we're through, we may work with a bargaining unit ongoing in a labor management process, but we're not working with an employee group unit on labor negotiations because that's a very defined process under law. I, I would, as you know, Mary, you get to do yeah. this a lot. My, my point is to suggest that the board would meet semi-annually with groups that have a, uh, a contract in place would be concerning. Okay. Thank you, Superintendent, for that information. Member Johnston. Yes, I'd like to uh, remind the board that the verbiage that is apparently still in this says uh, the negotiating committees, committees shall obtain the necessary certification of representation, which means from the unions. Uh, so we're already uh, talking. Yes, school boards are already supposed to be talking to the unions and be in charge of two things. One, wage negotiations and meet and confer meetings. What the superintendent is uh, con confusing here is that uh, there is one, is in charge of wage negotiations, which the board is supposed to be. Two, a meet and confer. 
is sitting down and basically uh, talking to that and meet and confer standard nomenclature for when boards negotiate, not negotiate, when boards meet with their uh, employees, which is uh, the, the school district employees. And I'd like to also remind the board that the Minnesota School Board Association is having ongoing negotiation training sessions around the state as we speak, and that is for obviously school boards, since this is a school board association. When I hear people say that, oh no, the board doesn't negotiate, and I hear see all the heads nodding of all the administration people, uh, that brings me up a big concern. Because we as a board, one of the few things that we do is, should be negotiating contracts. And that's uh, in here. Uh, and what we're doing here by doing this, I don't know why on earth we're doing this, we have a negotiating committee, which is not a negotiating committee. Uh, people told me uh, when we asked us about this in the business committee meeting that, oh no, we don't do any negotiations. Uh, I'd like to remind the board that this bylaw is called negotiating committee. I guess negotiating committees don't negotiate. Uh, I would... Uh, um, so that's why it's important, uh, getting back to what we have, a motion on the floor, I believe, uh, to add verbiage in there to make sure that this board does in fact do what they're supposed to do, which is meet and confer, meeting with the employees. And uh, no, I haven't met with the employees in a meet and confer issue, and yes, I would like to. And I think it's absolutely critical, and any board that doesn't want to, I think is really shirking their responsibility uh, as a board member. So that's why it's very important that I support the language from um, uh, that Mr. Glass presented, that we should meet on a semi-annual basis. It's absolutely critical. Okay, uh, Member Grover. Uh, it is true that some a lot of that MSBA gives uh, negotiating training to board members. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean for hands-on across the table negotiating. It could mean a, could, and I'm sure it does mean a wide variety of of aspects of negotiating. Uh, board members can be the direct negotiators. I have been across the table from the DFT in the past. I, I know that's been done from time to time. I've experienced it both ways. My preference is the way it's done now to keep, to keep the, to have the, the board set parameters, set the policy for negotiating, if you will, and, uh, and delegate those responsibilities to management who, who in turn brings settlements or questions, et cetera, back, back to the board as the meeting as the negotiating committee. It's a, it's a local choice. Uh, there's a wide, there's probably as many variations on how this process works almost as there are school districts in the state of Minnesota. So, so it's a choice and my choice as a board member is to continue with the current process which I think has uh, served us quite well. So thank you. Okay, thank you Member Grover. Member Glass? Yes, we have a <clears throat> policy 8055 that is defined uh, what, what our code of ethics is for members to be involved in the negotiations particularly item number seven within that policy. And we are obligated as a board to carry out those, those duties. The Minnesota School Board has been sending me uh, lots of information saying that, that we ought to be doing our duty as, as members of the elected uh, body uh, representing the public to make sure that the public that we represent communicates directly with, with the people that we're, <clears throat> we're providing the oversight for and for us to continuously delegate all of that responsibility through the administration uh, weakens the ability and, and really lessens the communications that we have with, with uh, the people that we both supervise and that we represent. So it's very nice to be on the negotiating committee, but if the committee never meets and never negotiates, this is part of the big charade that I've mentioned in, in past meetings. Uh, this is all a charade if you're not going to do what you were elected to do. And as a, a member of the public, uh, representing the, all the members of, of the people in this district, uh, as an at-large member, I, I am expected to, to do my duty, and I, I am planning to do it. And so we do need to be uh, 
part of the committee that at least communicates, if not does some of the negotiating. That doesn't mean that we can't do uh, delegate some of it, but we at least have to be uh, in the line of communication to make that, that happen. And we have not been in, in, in that line of communication. And so that's, it's been a very unsatisfactory uh, result to have uh, it appear that we're supposed to be doing something that we, in fact, are not been doing and have not been doing. And it's about time we change it back to the way it was originally designed. Uh, Member Cameron. I um, respect, respectfully totally disagree. Um, there is no way the board can be more better involved in negotiations than setting their parameters. Um, as Member Grover stated, I've also sat across the table as a board member, and um, even then, it is the board's parameters. So even then, as a single board member sitting there, it is the parameters that have been set by the board that's presented to each bargaining unit, whatever group that we're dealing with. <clears throat> and um, Keith, you mentioned that I do this a lot at UMD. I don't do it a lot, but I did one year with AFSCME employees in Minneapolis. But even then, sitting at the table with other employees of the university, I took the message from my supervisors there. It wasn't me setting those parameters. And so as a board, we set those parameters, and there is no way that we can be more involved than setting those parameters. Nothing happens unless we say what it is that happens. And so I've been on both sides. And, and I, so I say, and I want to just reassure the, the public and whoever is listening, that the employees of this district, they certainly know who's setting the parameters for negotiations. And we don't supervise any of those employees, uh, Member Glass. We, this person right here, the superintendent reports to the board. The rest of the employees report to the man that we chose to run this district. So I just want to say that I, I'm very comfortable in, in my position as a board member, in my role as um, um, a person who gets to say what the parameters are, what, what the raises are going to be, uh, what the language is going to be in the contract, what changes are going to occur. That all happens with the board. Thank you, Member Cameron. Okay, M Member Johnson. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, read uh, 8055 that Member Glass mentioned. I happen to have it here. Item number three um, says. Member Johnson, wait a sec. That's we're we're talking about 9045 and negotiating. That's correct. So let's, um, if you want to bring that up. Uh, later. Yes, I am. No, this is relevant to it's, this it's discussion. It's germane to this. Yes. What is what is it? it I'm not sure. I, I follow okay, you. well, I would like to read on 8055 negotiating code of ethics. We do have other uh, bylaws, uh, Madam Chairperson, besides 9045. We also have a whole series 8000 called policy. Right, but we and were all just that relevant, uh, there, is, there is at least three different bylaws and policies that uh, have to do with uh, negotiating. And one of those is 8055, which is entitled Negotiation Code of Ethics. Read number three, it says, make every effort to preserve the concept that the governance of the school district schools shall remain with the public's duly elected representative, the school board. That's us. Item number seven says. Member Johnson. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Item number seven says. And it's a code of ethics for negotiating, not circumvent the established negotiation process by allowing school district administrators and members of the school board who have not been designated as members of the school board bargaining team to negotiate or attempt to negotiate with members of the employee bargaining unit. All of these bylaws and policies are closely related to each other and for this board to go back and uh, start picking one thing apart and ignoring all the rest of our policies and bylaws is just irresponsible. And that's why we have to put in here, the member Glass had what we're voting on here, is that uh, we will have biannual meetings to preserve what the rest of our bylaws and our policies say that we will do as a board. Okay. 
so we're going to vote on this amendment, which says, Member Grover, you have it, if you could say it. Linda, please. Okay, we're going to vote on that amendment. Thank you. Um, all those in favor of that amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 So that fails 2 5 with members Johnston and Glass voting against it. Okay. Voting for no, or voting uh, for it, I'm sorry. Um, okay, we're going to vote, or we're going to move on because I think we're done with this because we don't have to vote on this separately. Correct? So we're going to move on. Let's uh, see, the Madam next Chair thing was. Person? Uh, Member Johnston, you were the next one, um, number four there. I'm still um, on the 9045. Discussion is still ongoing on that. We, uh, I'm sorry, Member Johnston, what? I'm sorry. Uh, item number uh, 3A2, which happens to be the negotiating committee 9045. Okay, we just we, had a motion on that. We had an amendment, right? Item, we voted there was an but amendment, a motion to have an amendment. And uh, yes, we're continuing discussion on that. You want to keep discussing bylaw 9045? Yes. Okay, how much more do you want to add to it? We've been talking about How much about more that. do we want? Well, I mean, do, do I want to add to it? Have we Is that an insinuation this, something that I'm only not supposed to add anything? I apologize, but we've been discussing this for probably about 15 minutes now. So we uh, yes, we were discussing a motion to amend it. We voted on that amendment. Right, exactly. Now we're talking about the uh, resolution, which is a negotiating committee 9045. It's not a resolution. Uh, okay, uh, item number uh, 3A2. Is that uh, more explanatory what we're talking about? That's not a resolution. Number 3A2. Right, it's not a resolution. Number 3A2, I said we were here talking about that. Am I missing something? We've been talking for the last half hour about what item then, Madam Chairperson? 3A2, it's not a resolution. Okay, 3A2, thank you. Uh, 3A2, there's been some talk about uh, this should be something negotiated by management. Uh, management, I'd like to remind the board and the public here that management uh, gets uh, pay raises like everybody else and uh, that is our responsibility as a board to uh, to be partake in that. Uh, there was also talk that uh, oh we just set the parameters. I'd like to ask one parameter setting that this board has given to the administration on the last two negotiating contracts that have been approved by this board. Zero. And then, uh, but to say that, oh yeah, oh, we're in participating is completely wrong. And that's why we have to oppose this because this is just a bunch of fluff and doing nothing. Confusing the issue more than it already is. Okay, Member Grover. You need to do that. Right. Member Grover. I'll yield to Member Casper. Okay, he's, if you want he's. To. Member Johnson, I'm going to point out to you as much as I don't like some of this. Um, we had a closed session and we discussed those parameters um, in a closed session uh, prior to those numbers coming back to us. Uh, I was there, I recall it, I'm sorry if you don't, but I was at that meeting that we had behind this very wall um, and we gave those parameters to the superintendent um, to go out and, and to continue those negotiations. So. Um, I'm going to ask if, if you recall that meeting as well um, and, and just to ask if you recall it because that's what my recollection is so, and maybe you can correct me. Oh, yes, I can correct you. Um, Member we were Johnson, wait a second. Please wait until you're called upon. Thank you. Go uh, ahead. Nobody else seems to wait. Uh, uh, yes, I do recall that meeting. I recall that meeting. We went in. We were given a 1% pay raise by the superintendent. We didn't present that to him. We were given it to him. Then the, 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 uh, a couple months later, suddenly we were presented to come to another hidden meeting and saying that we were going to approve that. And it wasn't a 1%. It was, a, if I recall, 1.3 and 1.4%. So even what we were given even though we didn't present it, even what we were given. I've got this documentation, Member Casper. I have all every documentation from that meeting, and I can present that if you don't recall it. 
So no, we were not given, we did not give any parameters to the, the administration. The administration gave them to us. They did not even follow the parameters they gave us. Okay, Member Grover, you want to? Um, Madam Chair, just for the record, because as has been said many times in, on many different subject matters, we have to be careful how we present ourselves to the public. There were no, have never been any hidden me meetings, at least not that I have heard of or participated in. And I'm in my 16th year on the board, and I can say that across the board. There's never, to my knowledge, been a hidden meeting of this board. Thank you. I, I'd like to add for the record as well, I'm not in a bargaining unit. Neither is Bill, neither are members of my administrative team. They're all on individual contracts. We're not, a, we're not in a bargaining unit. And so the reality is uh, what you negotiate with me as a whole, or individual contracts is a whole separate issue. So, so to suggest or imply that we're there uh, to, for our own good is simply not the case. We have many meetings with the board to talk about parameters, not just one. And then we go back and try to work through those parameters with the bargaining units. As far as labor management goes, or meet and confer, our new labor management process does give us an opportunity to meet and confer on a regular basis, and I think that's been a strength, frankly. Uh, but uh, uh, I just, for the record, uh, as you know, I'm on an individual contract. Um, so. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, Member Grover. Madam Chair, um, I, I call the question on the remainder of the business report, which is the motion on the floor. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have um, a motion to call the question. It's been seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Okay, we are going to vote on it. Okay, so we're going to vote on the whole business. Um, okay, all those in favor of the uh, remainder of the business report say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, no. so that carries 5-2 with members Johnston and Glass voting against it. Okay, we are, let's see where we are here. Um, see, there's no special resolutions. Let's see, and anything other? Anything else? Uh, um, yes. Um, Marcus? Okay. Um, student representative? This last month I asked around, you know, my class, um, um, we all know that that budget is very tight, you know, for our school. And I was just wondering if anyone had any ideas for how we could possibly save money. And um, one interesting thing that something uh, point someone pointed out was that um, the walls of the school, at least at East, I'm not sure if at the other schools, are painted, um, I believe, three times a year. And this seems a little bit irrational. And um, maybe they could, you know, wash the walls, maybe paint it um, once a year, once every two years, and then wash the walls. And this, if this occurs in all schools, this could save like thousands of dollars in both paint and, you know, labor. Um, and I was just wondering if there's any way that a similar um, alternative could be made, or if this paint policy is, you know, set in stone or whatever. But, yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. Leiter, would you like to respond to that? I apologize that I was a little distracted packing up here, so I don't know that I caught all of what was identified, but if the gist of it is that the district, um, from what is being observed in the school, I'm not sure which school, um, East, that there's a policy to, to paint portions of the building three times a year. Um, is that? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Um, I can communicate based on our, our practice with our in-house painting staff that um, there's, there's different schedules for painting. Unfortunately, I, I think the more accurate um, depiction of what's going on is we aren't painting as often as a lot of people would like us, like us to paint. Some cases, our standard painting schedule for classrooms, for example, has really been closer to every 10 or 15 years. Um, we, we try to maintain a higher level of complete painting wall to wall in our corridors on a once every five years um, schedule. 
what was probably being observed is there is an effort frequently to go in and touch up, which is one of the reasons why and with limited maintenance dollars in the past, we've gone to a color scheme in our corridors that's easier to touch up. You know, that, that's been a, an ongoing debate whether that's the best way because all white corridors um, aren't as inviting as some with color. But the problem is that if you paint a color and then go to try to touch it up even after a year, the colors don't match very well and you can see that painting. So we're, we're trying to do as little as possible relative to the painting but still maintain, it, at least in those public areas, a clean appearance where marks and graffiti and other things that get on the walls are covered up. But I think that's a, a good um, recognition out there because you probably are seeing some of our people in the buildings painting on a regular basis but that effort isn't really a wall to wall it's a touch up trying to maintain as clean of appearance as possible thank you Mr. Leiter good question though if you can come up with any other ideas for budget cuts both of you as stu students um, ask what the students think too that's a great idea thank you member Johnston uh, yes we have item number 4b to discuss as follows 4b 4 4b 5 6d and 6e member Johnston, and 5a we we already voted on the whole business report so uh, no we didn't uh, you did not specify what we we're voting on you did not clarify that uh, you complete. can't vote on something when we had items um, pulled out are you Johnston, saying that we cannot pull items out we did. We were. We were. Yes. Yeah, so why was? Uh, why, why did we not have discussion on 4B4? Member Johnston, we already voted on that. So we're on questions other, and then um, we're going to be uh, yes, adjourning. Yes, I do have questions. Other ones. Others. Go ahead. I got two items. First of all. Uh, you're running this meeting wrong. We pulled out items and you totally violated even our own traditional operating procedure that you like to brag about so much. Another item I'd like to bring up on uh, this is uh, the school exec connect uh, profile. We talked about that on the subcommittee and, uh, yeah. and I'd like to have a discussion on that. We received this from there, from uh, school exec connect, the desired attributes and the new superintendent. And I must say that I think there is nine of them here. These are the most, uh, most uh, watered down profiles that I've ever seen in my life. This is just boilerplate stuff. There isn't one thing in here that indicates any of the issues that we have in our school or things. There are also things like we cannot, they're, they're unquantifiable. Things like have a 21st century educational vision educational leader is approachable. There isn't one person who went to apply to every one of those items. So this, uh, I'd like to again bring it up, uh, as we did at the board, that this report is unacceptable. And also bring up the, the report itself, when we got that from them, said that this board would approve the profile. We have not done that. And that is uh, said here, uh, quoting from them, they will submit the report on findings and the board will accept the criteria. This board has not done that. And again, I'm asking for this board to start paying attention for this uh, superintendent search because if this is the best we can do, we're doing pretty poor. And it's not gonna look good for us hiring a new superintendent. And I will be bringing up again how this uh, chairperson totally violated us, our uh, thing, by taking away our rights to pull out consent agenda. Just completely erroneous, and I'm asking the board uh, to reconsider that at this meeting now. The question was called. We voted on the business committee. You did not say what um, we we're voting on. We we're voting on 40, 40, 90, 45. Uh, you had no right whatsoever to go back and deny this board to even have discussions violating your own principles of violating supposedly our board the way we operate. You don't even operate the way we operate, which is totally violating our own bylaws and everything else. We did vote on the business committee. The question was called, which stopped all debate. Okay, I would like to entertain a motion for adjournment, please. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>